Well, hello and welcome to the latest video here from Cantock Art in a rather sunny, if somewhat chilly, Western Supermare in the southwest of England. So today we're going to make a little box. I should have brought an example along. I haven't, so you're going to have to put up with seeing what it's going to look like at the end. But basically it's going to be a little tray and we're going to do it using a slab. Uh, great for if you haven't got a mould or if you're not very good at throwing that you still want to make practical things. The first thing I've done is I've rolled this clay out and I rolled it out to the standard thickness that I use, which is about six millimetres. Uh, so I've got my roll, two sky sticks, rolled it out and it's now perfectly that thickness. Don't with this type of clay, you don't want to go any thinner. It's, the clay won't take it, it'll crack. Um, so it's perfect for this, but we're using a stoneware clay, which is a fired clay. If you use an air dry clay and all the rest of it, then these rules don't apply. So apart from my guide stick, which I've already used. I've also got a knife with me. I've got a tool for smoothing in. I've got a rubber kidney that this could equally well be a credit card or a debit card uh, that you don't want anymore. Got a rolling pin, got some rulers, got something that's got a square on it. You could use, of course, a set square. I can't find mine, so I'm going to use this box with a nice clean square edge. And I've also got a spare piece of board, which you'll see what we're going to use that for in a bit. So first thing is, having rolled it out, I now want to cut it into the shape. Now this can be either rectangular, it can be square, doesn't really matter which. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I've decided I'm just going to go with whatever size I can get out of this clay, having rolled it. So I'm going to use my guide stick, which I use for rolling out, as a straight edge. And I'm going to lay it uh, like that. And then I'm going to cut down the side of that. So you could use a ruler if you haven't got this, just to give me my first square. Put that to one side. Oops, I'll do that. Next, I want to cut off, oh, I'm actually, I'm going to cut off the other side as much as I can so I can see what we've got. So I'm going to line it up like that. And cut down the edge of that. So I've got two nice straight edges. Hopefully they are parallel, but if not, we'll find out in a bit. Then I find my nice square thing uh, and I'm going to line it up the top there and that's then going to give me I'll just stand up to do this and I can cut along there that nice right angle and now I'm just going to get my stick and I'm going to continue that line right the way across hopefully now the nice right angled end there like that out of the way I'll do the same at the other end so around about here I'm going to line it up we have Hannah in the studio with us today. She's uh, working on her tumblers for sale for Christmas. So she's doing some glazing. Hello. Don't mind about that. And then do the same again. So this is going to be rectangular by the look of it. At this point you might think, oh, that's quite a bit. I don't want to make something that big. But that's all right. We're going to lose some of this in the sides. So get that out of the way. Now. Next thing is we need to decide how high we're going to make the sides. So I'm actually, I'm actually going to make my sides that high. After firing, of course, it's going to be slightly lower, but that's that's quite a nice height, I think, for putting crisps in and that sort of thing. So I'm now going to lay that down my straight edge. Try and find out whether my edge is actually straight or not. Again, just going to trim off a tiny bit. Like that. And then what I'm going to do is, using the back of the knife and not pressing too hard, I'm going to run down the side of the ruler here and I'm going to score the clay. Now you don't want to go any more than halfway through, so you'll be really quite gentle with it. All you're really doing is marking where you're going to fold it. Like that. So do that there. Then I do it the same across the top. Then lay that down and I score it. Again, be careful not to cut too deep, otherwise your, your piece will fall apart when you try to make it. Make the same again on the other side. Like that. And then the same across the bottom. Be careful to stay with the ruler. Now you can see that area there, that's going to be the size of our actual piece. So we're going to, all this is going to be folded up. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about whether I'm going to have a pattern on it. Well, I've been doing some Christmas ones with Christmas stamps on them, but I'm going to do these. This one is going to be a non-Christmas one, so we can use it the rest of the year. And I've actually got here some little pieces of lace that I'm going to use. Now, a lot of you that follow me so far see I use doilies a lot, and they are quite good. But on this case, I'm going to use this nice little bit of lace. 
and I'm going to lay it there on the side there. And then using the rolling pin, very lightly, I don't want to roll it too hard because I don't want to change the shape of my piece. You might be thinking, oh, why didn't I do this before? But the thing is, if you do it before, then you lose, you, you won't know where to put it. So, so I'm going to roll that in, so not too hard, so I don't want to distort it too much. And then I'm going to get my kidney and I'm just going to make sure it's really in there. Sit down with the kidney. This might not leave much of a pattern, but we will see. Okay, then I'm going to find an end and pull it off. Okay, so that's rather neat. Now remember, of course, that that is going to be the top of your thing. So if you, so, I'm putting it that way so the pattern is going to look that way up, that way up rather, when it's done. So let's do the same on the other side. In place. These are pieces of um, lace I bought that I then chopped up into smaller pieces to make them more manageable. They came on a longer roll. And, uh, I bought these from one of our, what we call our car boot sales. Right, and then I'm going to press it in all the way down as well. Right, you can buy these from any haberdashery type shop. Always when you're choosing a lace, try and choose one that's got quite a big open pattern. Don't go one that's really fine because it won't press into the clay so well. Okay, then I'm just going to do, am I going to bother do the end? Oh yeah, let's put a bit on the end just for the sake of it. Okay, roll that in. Press it in. so deep but I'll make a bit better effort at the other end. The trouble is if you don't get it right first time it's very difficult to redo it so I might just end up just smoothing that out completely. We'll see. Throw that in there. Make sure it's pressed well in with the kidney. Do a better job with it this time than I did at the other end. Okay. Another bit and out. That's better. Let's just see if I can do better here. So I'm gonna have to smooth it out again before I can try again. Otherwise, it's just going to look like it's got a ghost. Like that. Let's see what do again. See, not everybody can get it perfect first time, and I'm certainly not one of those people. Right. Okay. This time, press it in. Make sure it's really in there. And tight. Now you'll see that in doing it, I've distorted the edges. They're no longer quite straight. So now I'm going to get my either my guide stick or my ruler, and I'm just going to line that up like that and just nip it off so it's nice and even. Again, if we go any further. Next thing I'm going to do before I start to cut it in any way, I'm just going to make sure I can lift it off the board. So I'm going to just very, very gently raise it up. You don't want to distort it too much. Clay has a memory and will distort horrendously. Next thing I'm going to do then is I'm actually going to cut the corner. So I'm going to cut from the corner there to the corner there. Now, if you haven't got a steady hand, use a ruler. You can get away with it. So I'll just do that up here where I am going to use a ruler. Like that. We're working on the outside of the box at the moment so if you're wondering why I haven't put a pattern on the inside it's because that's going to be the bottom of the piece. Okay. Uh, uh. I find it's best to work from the inside to the outside so you don't accidentally cut too far. So don't go that way because you're likely to see your hands slip and then you cut into the square at the bottom, which you don't want to do. Okay. Right. Right. Next thing I'm going to do then, before I do turn it over, is sometimes you can do these where you can actually have the two ends wrapped around. I think for me that looks untidy for my boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away one of these triangles. 
And the one I'm going to take away is the one on the long side. So I'm going to cut down there. I should be able to take that out completely. Same again on here. Make sure I've got the right one. And this is going to leave us a flap here, which will help to join it all together, but we don't need necessarily the other side. So it's up to you whether you do that, but I like to have this taken off and just have the one end folded round. And we'll see why in a minute. So we'll do that like that. Okay, and now that is ready to be turned over. Now, the best way to do this is not to try and pick it up and flip it if you can avoid it, because it's very soft, it's going to tear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another board and I place it over the top and then I take this away and perform some magic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this away and I'm going to flip it over. Like that. So do it quick, do it bold, you'll be fine. Okay, and hopefully it shouldn't have stuck. And of course it has. So come on, I think one. There we go. So we've got it turned over, nice and neat. Now we start actually putting it together. So at this point you're going to need some slip, and I haven't got any. <laughs> so badly prepared that I am, I've left my slip over here. Let's go get it. Right, we have the slip. This is a bit dry, so I'd put some water in it, so I'm going to stir it up a little bit, get it working. Okay, now we're ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the end in. So I'm going to take this here. And where I've cut it, you see it's it's folding quite neatly. So you bring it up like that, get it at the right angle, and then we fold it in again along where you cut the triangle at each end, like that. Okay. Rest it like that. Right, then what we do is in the triangle here, we're going to score that, ready for joining. I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to do the set, bring this one up, fold it along that line. Like that. Fold the end in. So again, along that score mark. Okay. Right, and then I'm going to score that. Like that. And the same on the other side. slip on it. So it's going to slip on there. Again, if you're using other techniques, you're not using pottery as such, you're using air dry clay, whatever, a little bit of water will still help it also stick together. That's a good plan. Now, we bring the side up. So again, we've got that score mark, which will give us a nice fold. And we bring that up so that, that triangle is level with the top, like that. That side, so you can see better. We'll bring that up there. You see how I've joined it in that side. Do the same here. That triangle should be level with the top, so, it's, so not pointing down or anything. Kept it nice and level like that. Now this clay is quite wet. I have dried it off a little bit, but obviously not enough. It is still quite floppy, but that's okay because that means that we can make adjustments easier to get our box square. So each one of these triangles, if it's on properly, will be flat with the top. Okay. And then before you completely join, just go around it, make sure you've got it all tucked in. It's all looking good. So these straight edges should be level with the ends. Look at the other side, that's a little bit floppy there, so bring that in, tidy that up. Tidy that up here. Okay. Right. Next we get our joining tool. What I'm going to do is we need to, to join these back in. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a little bit of clay. And I put it down that junction there. Make sure it's long enough. And then I'm going to put a little bit of slip on it. Put it into the junction. We get our tool and bracing it with your hand so it's not going to flatten it out. Work that in on one side and then up onto the into that join there. So that 
triangular piece it's fully joined in it's not going anywhere I'll repeat on this one a piece of clay into the other side There. And I join it in. Yeah. Join it in properly. Okay. And the same on the other side. Long enough, I might well have to roll another one. Yeah. Stick on it, put it into that join there, put that in. joined on properly and the other way around. Right, next thing I'm going to do is where I've scored it, you can see it's a very straight edge so that's going to need a little bit of reinforcing. If you've rolled your clay a bit too thick, you may not need to do this because the clay itself will be thick enough. But I've made this a good thickness, so I'm going to have to add a bit of reinforcement. So I'm going to get a coil and I put it all around the bottom. It doesn't have to be one piece, but I'm going to try and get as much out of this as I can. And put some glaze in, put some slip in, another in there, coil in. And work it in onto the top and bottom. Make sure that our side is going to stay attached after we've finished. All the way around. Now you may think while I'm doing this, well, it's very rough, but what I'm aiming to do is to join it first and then do the finessing and the tidying at the last. We have a saying, detail comes last. A bit like the dog, you know, detail. No, oh, never mind. Really bad joke, sorry. Okay. Okay, so now we'll coil off the end. in there. <laughs> so get that right down the other side, get nice and firmly attached. Set that all the way in. So I'll tidy up properly in a minute. The other end. And if I can get Hannah's attention, which is difficult because she's got her headphones on. Honey, uh, could you bring me a mm -hmm. um, a big wooden ball? Uh, no, a sorry, a big lollipop stick. One of the big wide ones. Uh, lollipop stick. Up, up. Oh, that's it. One, that, yeah, one of them. Uh, and could you bring me a spatula, please? Spatula. Yes, please. Should be should be in there. On there. Is 
good to have Hannah back in the studio for a little bit, even if it only is only for an hour or so. She's been on maternity leave, looking after my new granddaughter. Discovering that the joys of motherhood and that, oh yes, I'll be back to work after two months. <laughs> didn't actually really work out like all of us knew it wouldn't but there we go <laughs> yeah. right so what I'm going to do with the lollipop stick is I'm now going to use that to smooth my join at this point take away any surplus as well I like these ones these are sort of like a big bit fatter but the but any lollipop stick will do the job even the ones you buy by packs of 100 from the craft store. Lollipop sticks are very versatile pottery tools, I've found. Okay. Smooth that out. Again, thumbs and fingers are often the best for getting fine detail. And remember, if you're finding you're not getting anywhere, you're rubbing things, it's just getting rough and rough. It's because your fingers need a wash. So just get them cleaned up a bit and it'll make a whole load of difference to get things smoothed in. Side. So I'm not actually using the water to smooth it, I'm using just a clean finger, I'm just using the water to clean my finger, that's all. If you start to add water to it, it starts to get softer and softer and eventually it'll collapse, not to mention the fact you start actually removing the clay body itself, leaving behind the grog which is used to firm up the clay and actually ends up rougher than when you started after firing. It's fine until it's fired and then it comes back all rough and you think, why is it rougher? Because you took the clay away. So, last little detail, that's just tidying up the last little bits, little nooks and crannies, as tidy as possible. So if you're going to use this for food um, type things, it's really important to get the inside smooth. Any little nooks and crannies will be the perfect hiding places for food and bacteria and things and you never get it perfectly clean and then you've got a bit of a health hazard on your hand. You get nice and tight and clean so you can actually wash it properly. Okay. Okay. Fire out. Okay. Now you notice that in the working it's all got a little bit floppy, a bit distorted. Um, I am going to get my kidney. First of all, just going to smooth out the bottom a little bit more. Whoops. If you get grooves like that, it means you've got a dirty kidney. Clean it off. Now, of course, at this point, I could, if I wanted to, put a pattern inside. I'm not going to, but you could. What I'm just going to do now is it's finishing touches. So first of all, it's, as I said, it's got a bit baggy. It's uh, it's lost its shape a bit, and this is where the spatula comes in. So you can actually use it your piece back into shape. Now if you've got a pattern on it, don't get too vigorous with it because you will lose the pattern. So, you find the right amount of force to exert without completely obliterating the pattern. We see even just doing that improved its shape. off the rim so I'm just gonna run a kidney around it and that's my fingers as well just get the rim nice and tidy again you don't want sharp edges Pick it up like that almost there now and then just look at it decide if you're happy with the shape okay and that'll do just take that off there a little bit of finessing here a bit of finessing there to make sure I'm happy and there we go there we have one nice little dish which uh, will be perfect for putting in grits, chips, biscuits, fries, whatever you need to put in it. Okay, there we go. That's our video for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.